Hi there, my name. Hello there, my name is Kate, and I am going to be drawing chibis with you today. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a nice circle, and that's going to be our head. So just keep that in mind um, when you're drawing the circles, because you want them to be nice and big, um, because otherwise it'll be harder to do what you're doing. So what we're going to do then is we are actually going to draw in some guidelines, which as you can see is just this plus basically, and then on the top half of the plus you're going to want to put a little mark about halfway up, and that's going to be your hairline. Now, what you're going to do after that is you're basically going to draw down from either side in sort of a curved pattern, and about halfway up you're going to um, draw in your little base. Now what you want to do is you want to get your um, basic stance established first. So we're just going to draw down from either side of the head and we are going to draw down from the middle in a nice little um, basically uh, curvy triangle legs. Kind of cute, right? Now we are going to make the adult a bit longer and less um, thick because generally children are just overall a bit chubbier. Um, no offense to any kids out there. Um, anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to draw in the arms. Now that we've established the stance and posi positioning of our characters, we're um, just going to draw in these sort of um, rectangular arms. Now, you want to think of them almost like a rectangular slip of paper that you're attaching to the side of like a paper doll. So just think about what that would look like in the stance that you're trying to draw. Um, so now we're going to draw in any items that our characters might be holding. We're also going to be drawing in um, aspects of their clothing. In the So think about what um, our characters might hold in the Victorian age um, and what they might wear. Like, for instance, I've drawn Our Lady holding a parasol, which was very common in, in the Victorian age, um, for multiple reasons, not the least of which being that they didn't have sunblock. Additionally, they had a bad habit of just kind of tos tossing their garbage out the window. Like, literally, they would take, like, their full chamber pod or, like, a trash can, and they'd just kind of dump it out the window without looking. Um, so no matter what time of day, if you're walking along the street, um, there's a chance that someone might dump their, um, trash right on your head. So that's part of why, um, a lot of Victorians carried parasols or wore wide brim hats, because really no one wants that on their head. Um, so I've decided to draw my Victorian lady with a nice full skirt um, and a cute little corset. Now, traditionally in the Victorian era, um, corsets would have been worn under um, your other garments, but because this is steampunk and so it's sort of modernized Victorian era, um, it's common to see them on the surface just because they're very cool to look at, honestly. Um, so just, if you need some, um, help figuring out what you want your characters to look like or how to draw them, don't be afraid to Google images, um, and just kind of find what you're looking for and how you want that to be drawn. Now. We are going to um, add in some character details. For instance, um, I'm working towards giving the young boy there some eyes. Now, you want to start this off by having two um, pretty much identical ovals um, on both sides of the line. Um, so once you have that, you're going to basically draw down into a little loop um, making almost a six. So that's how I tend to draw my eyes. If you want to draw your eyes in a different way, honestly, I, I feel like that's perfectly fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to give them a little nose and a mouth. Those can just be like a dot and some lines, and now we're going to give him some ears. Um, 
So what we're basically going to do is draw a half circle on either side of his head and put a little X in the middle of that. Um, so as you can see, that looks like a nice little ear there. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to give him some hair. Now, remember that um, little dash we put halfway up the plus sign we put for our guidelines? That's going to be the start of their hairline. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're drawing your character's hair. Um, oftentimes I see especially new artists um, put their hairline at the very top of the head and that just doesn't look quite right. So just keep that in mind when you're drawing. Now to draw more messy hair, draw almost like a wave pattern or how you might um, quickly draw some grass. Um, because otherwise it just won't look natural because hair isn't perfect. It isn't like gonna stay exactly put um, most of the time. So don't be afraid to make them look a little bit messy, make it messed up a little bit. Um, so keep that in mind. And again, the hairline is about halfway up above the eyes and the eyes should be right around the middle. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is the lady's hair. Now, this just kind of keep in mind that it's going to sort of follow the curvature of her head and um, her dress because it's laid against there um, since we're having her hair down. So just keep that in mind when you're drawing um, a lady's hair. And remember um, that none of this is set in stone. So if you mess something up, you can always erase it. The next thing you need to do is line art. Now line art you can't erase because we're doing that with a pen, so just remember that you need to be very careful when it comes to line art and ha to have everything nicely established where you want it so you just have to trace. Because otherwise it can get very um, difficult to keep track of. So I'm actually going to be speeding up the video shortly just because line art and coloring take a very long time and there's not necessarily a ton to talk about here. Um, so just so you know, this is already sped up, but it's going to get even faster. Um, anyway, so just basically trace the lines you've already got for line art. It shouldn't um, we shouldn't be doing anything that new or interesting, we just, we want the lines we've already got traced nicely so that they stick out when we go to do our colors. Now, while you're doing your line art, since you don't have to worry about figuring out, um, positioning or anything, this is a great time to think about what you want your color scheme to look like. Keep in mind that, especially in the Victorian era, um, colors such as blue, um, purple and green were relatively uncommon, at least in their brightest forms, especially purple, which is why it's so heavily associated with royalty nowadays. Um, additionally, keep in mind that colors have meaning a lot of the time. Warm colors will give you a very nice warm image. It'll make you feel kind of fuzzy inside a little bit when you look at it. Um, earthy tones feel very homey and sort of relaxing. So just keep those things in mind when you're choosing your color scheme. Um, we often see a lot of earthy tones when we're looking towards um, Victorian ages because, well, those were the most, um, those were the easiest tones to get and the most common tones. So keep that in mind too when you're designing your character. Um, so as you can see now that I'm part of the way through the line art, it really does make a huge difference whether or not something is lined. Like, you can see exactly where the line art is and where it's it's not. Um, so just remember that that is a really important step a lot of the time. Um, anyway, back to colors. Um, Depending on what colors you choose, just keep in mind that oftentimes a little bit of contrast will add a lovely feature to your drawing and will make it more eye-catching. Um, and when we do get to um, 
the actual coloring phase of this, keep in mind that different objects should have different textures. For instance, that corset is likely going to Remember to think about the different materials that um, would be used for your costume. Um, for instance, satin would have a much um, less rustic feel to it than, for instance, cotton. So just remember that when you're thinking about how you kind of want to go about drawing. Um, for instance, hair should be done directionally. Um, you're going to want your hair to go from the scalp to the tips, because that way it'll look like they're separate strands. Another important thing to remember is that to add depth, you really need to add some highlights and shadows, because otherwise you end up having a sort of 2D um, flat image, and that's not what we want. We want something eye-catching, and we want something that you look at and you see, oh, this is a nice, pretty, like, rounded picture. Um, because it just, it looks kind of, um, dull and boring when you don't, um, have any two-dimensional sort, or, uh, three-dimensional sort of elements. So remember to add some nice shadows and highlights. And when you're done with that, blend. You just, you really need to blend it really helps. It makes it look less